If I asked you to name me some intelligent movies, what would you say? Perhaps Arrival? <laughs> An excellent choice. Maybe some Ex Machina? I see we're feeling sci-fi-ish today. Primer? Look at you being all niche and artsy. Or even... Get the f*** off my video! In the vast lexicon of films spanning across all genres, I'd imagine the last movies you would suggest are Arnold Schwarzenegger's. And even though Arnold's work ethic has been hugely inspirational for me, I get it. The man has starred in some of the most action-packed, excessively violent films for decades now. If you compare what the traditional Hollywood leading man looked like with Arnold, you just might be able to notice a slight difference between them. He was Austrian! The things I've seen Arnold do on screen are not exactly what many would label as highbrow entertainment. Let me show you what I mean. the same feeling, so I'm coming day and night. This is the perception many have of Schwarzenegger's films. Not necessarily bad movies, but more so fun, dumb popcorn entertainment. There are a few notable exceptions, but for the most part this perception has prevailed for years. But there's one film that many still consider as just the get to the chopper movie. A film that is smarter than you think. That's not cool. Deep in the jungle, where nothing that lives is safe. The story of Predator follows an elite military strike team that is deployed on a dangerous mission in the jungles of Central America, led by Arnold Schwarzenegger's character Dutch. Which, side note, Dutch just has like the perfect introduction to this movie. Dylan! Mando! Son of a bitch! But just what is this mission Dutch's squad is on? Who oh. cares? Because in the middle of this testosterone oozing uh. operation, the squad is systematically hunted down by an alien with a gun. It's almost as if these men are prey being stalked by a predator. Dude, that's why they call it predator. As this mysterious alien systematically picks off Dutch's squad, the men gradually devolve from trained professionals to panicked boys as the horrors in the jungle consume them. It's some, it's some serious heart of darkness type shit, you know? By the end of the film, this predator has whittled down the squad to just Dutch. It's a real 1v1 on Final Destination with no items, if you will. In the final minutes, we see two apex killers of their respective species, stripped of all their prestige and accolades. Any semblance of mystery the audience had about what this monster is or what it wants is gone. Any sense of status that Dutch had at the beginning of the film has now been reduced to a desperate man in the mud, driven only by his primal instinct to survive. Despite these two beings coming from diametrically opposed backgrounds, they share more than we think. They are two sides of the same coin. And by this point, they both share a common goal. Kill or be killed. As the dust settles, Predator cheats him, blows himself up, Dutch wins, USA, USA. A predominant theme in Predator is the idea that there's always a bigger game being played. No matter how powerful you think you are in this movie, there is always someone bigger and better. For example, Max stabbing the scorpion on Dylan's shoulder. The scorpion, typically one of the strongest predators in its respective ecosystem, is easily crushed by a stronger foe. Ironically enough, this same fate would later fall upon Mac. The idea of being a small part of a bigger game is not something these men are used to, both on and off screen. By the time Predator released in 1987, gun-toting invincible heroes were common tropes of the action genre. Your typical 80s action hero was an unstoppable force, a character that through sheer badassness disposed of any challenges. Given that this was a trope in many action movies of Predator's time, the casting of this movie could not have been more perfect to troll the audience. Y'all are ready for this. <clears throat> Shoot this one time off film.
You got Apollo Creed in the jungle fighting someone. You got Jesse Ventura in the jungle fighting someone. You got the Terminator in the jungle fighting someone. You got the guy that wrote Lethal Weapon in the jungle fighting someone. We got Frank Mitchell in this bitch. Oh, you get the idea. Super stacked cast. Predator, knowing the tropes of the time, even leans into this a little bit in the opening action sequence. In a moment that's so comically violent, I can only describe it as borderline satirical. Showtime, kid. For these action movie heroes, this is how most conflicts are resolved. Incompetent goons that pose no real threat getting mowed down. To Dutch and his men, this scuffle is nothing more than a game. But while these action heroes are dominating their respective ecosystem, a stronger foe was playing a different game. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. It's you. You're my sponsor. But thanks for watching. I appreciate all y'all. Alright, back to Bicep Man. For as capable as these men proved to be in the first action scene, they are simply no match for the Predator. The alien hunter has technologies that far surpass our own, like Neosporin. Fighting the Predator like an 80s action hero by slinging lead, whooping ass with a big old stogie, letting off some clever one-liner isn't gonna work. Case in point, Jesse Ventura's character, Blaine. From our first moments with Blaine, he's the quintessential 80s tough guy. He's slinging lead, letting off some clever one-liners, I ain't got time to breathe. And uh, chewing on a plant-based substance of unknown origin. Tyrannosaurus. Yet, notice how he fares against the Predator. Much like the Scorpion, these men are fighting an enemy they cannot defeat. The character Billy presents an interesting perspective on this dilemma. From the moment they land in the jungle, Billy is constantly looking up toward the trees, while the rest of his squad seems perplexed. What the hell is wrong with you? There's something in those trees. He knows that whatever is out there is literally, and in another sense, metaphorically beyond them. The death of Hawkins and Blaine confirms Billy's suspicions that he's had since the start. They're being hunted, not merely attacked. It's not until Billy reveals to Dutch that he's killing us one at a time, like a hunter, that Dutch finally looks upwards, now knowing what kind of game they're in. Predator's protagonist, Dutch, provides perhaps the most compelling subversion of the action hero trope. For the audience, not only do we see how capable Dutch is on screen, but we also know the types of characters Arnold Schwarzenegger played beforehand. At the time, he was quite literally one of the poster boys of the 80s action hero. Many people assume that Dutch beat the Predator simply because, well, it's, it's Arnold, dude. He's he's too cool. He, he can't lose. He's too cool to lose. You see that? He's going to robot punch that guy. He's the Terminator. He's going to robot punch him. Duh! Yet, we see Dutch fight the Predator like any other action hero Arnold would play. Big machine guns firing off, veins popping, and it does nothing. It's not until his conversation with Billy and seeing his squad mates wiped out trying to fight the Predator like an action hero would that Dutch truly changes. The best way to win an unwinnable game is to stop playing, and in order to beat the Predator, Dutch had to stop fighting like Arnold and start fighting like Predator. In my most humble opinion, this is really what makes Predator such an interesting subversion of the action genre of the time. It posits an interesting question of, how would a stereotypical juiced up action hero win a fight against a near invincible opponent? Predator's answer to this question is to challenge these characters to fight in a way that is virtually antithetical to their entire ethos. Strip away these characters larger than life bravado Tyrannosaurus. and force them to fight for survival. It's pretty cool. I wish the same magic could be said of the later Predator sequels and spin-offs, but uh, hey, what are you gonna do? Except Prey! That movie fucks. Watch it in the Comanche dub, you won't be disappointed. At the end of the day, even if you think everything I just said was a bunch of Hocus Pocus, Sunny V2 video essay garbage, I hope at the very least you can appreciate that 
The design for Predator is sick as hell, dude. Come on, you gotta give me that. Give me that. Come on, it's pretty cool.